Hi there, this is Vivi Cameron here, and today we are going to be making this project using Tim Holtz Village Collection that is a massive die set. So it includes 87 individual dies that you can mix and match to create different buildings. This picture here from the C6 website allows you to identify the different shapes and the different little die cuts that you require to put together these buildings. And by just looking at this, you can also understand that there are two main types of foundations for these buildings. One is a square and the other one is more rectangular and taller. Okay, in that order of ideas, the first thing you need to do is to identify the different dies to die cut different parts of your buildings. And to easily identify the dies, I place them in different sheets according what they cut. So I have windows in one sheet, doors in another one, all the pieces to cut roofs and chimneys in another one. I could do the same with the main dies to die cut any building, but I decided to leave them in the original packaging. Many dies in this set has a duplicate like these ones here and almost all the dies in this set. And this will allow you to die cut the pieces for your building even quicker. So for the building today, I'm going to be using these two dies here that are for the main walls or the base of the building. These dies here are for other type of buildings, so I'm not going to use them today. And this one is the one I'm going to use for the roof. And I'm going to leave on my glass mat only the main dies I'm going to use for this project. And I'm also going to use other dies such as windows and doors this die here that will complete the roof at the front of the building. Okay, to die cut this, I'm going to use a piece of low tack tape to keep the dies in place. I'm going to cut each shape twice. One set of die cuts is actually to put the project together and the other set of die cuts is to be able to emboss them and to add colors and then to decorate the project after. And when you are cutting the doors or the windows, it's very important to pay attention to the way the small dies cut the paper. Because I was going to cut this window here, and then I realized, oh no, if I do that, I'm going to cut a big hole in that panel. And what I need actually is just a small window, just like that. And apart from this, I need to die cut the panels for the exterior windows that are these ones here so that at the very end, when we are decorating the building, we can add these larger panels over the gap created by the smaller window die. So some of these smaller dies will cut a solid piece or a frame like this one here, and some others will partially cut the windows or the doors like this one here. You can create different types of roof for these buildings, and you also have different dies to die cut tiles or chimneys. And the die set includes duplicates of some of these pieces as well. Okay, so it seems like a pile of work, but it actually took me about five minutes to do this, even when I was die cutting the pieces twice. So you can see here that these two die cuts are identical. I'm going to put one apart to decorate it later, and I'm going to use this one here. Now let me show you a little bit better what I was trying to say when I was die cutting the windows in this side panel. So I just die cut a rectangular window on that side panel and later on I'm going to add this one over. You will find coordinating windows dies and doors. Just pay attention because if I use the larger window die to die cut that panel then it will be harder to glue it over. Not impossible but a little bit harder. You will also notice that the dies will create scoring lines. I hope you can see them there. When a die creates a scoring line, this means that there is a fold there. So we have to fold the paper just like that over those scoring lines. I take my time to do this because I want my folds to be straight. If I'm having any trouble folding over those scoring lines, I use something like a ruler or maybe even the die cutting plates to help me to fold straight over those lines. So the best advice I can give you to get this done perfectly is take your time. Take your time. There is no rush. 
Soon after die cutting and folding over these scoring lines, you will see that this makes a lot of sense and you can put your building together. And I'm going to start building this from the base to the roof. And I'm going to be using liquid glue to adhere this. I like to use Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. It's my favorite glue. You have seen it in all my videos. And the bottle get sometimes blocked or most of the times because I never put the lid on. And of course the glue dries on the tip. So I need a pin to get rid of that blockage. And then I just enjoy my glue. My glue is amazing. And it provides a better bond. If you use double-sided tape, your building might fall apart. So I highly recommend to use liquid adhesive or glue. And we are going to add glue only over those little flaps. And then we are going to glue the building together as I'm showing here. To build a basic house, all you have to do is to adhere this flap at the back here so you have that square base but as I'm going to adhere these pieces to make this house or building to look bigger I'm going to adhere this first before adding any dimension because it's a lot easier to adhere this when the die cuts are all flat I'm not speeding the video here in this part because I really want you to see how I adhere this. So I take my time and as I'm using liquid glue, if anything is out of place, I can just easily align this just like that. I also hold the paper while it's drying and I also like to use a bond folder to burnish over those joints. So I make sure that that's perfectly adhered and in place. And then when you have this part done, all you have to do is to adhere the roof. Then again, we are going to work from the lower areas of the building towards the top roof. So I'm adhering here the side unit's roof and I do pretty much the same in both sides. We are going to adhere the top roof is this piece here that has a little indentation at the front or that's the front of the piece and then all you have to do is to adhere it in place like so I'm going to add liquid glue and then I'm going to adhere this just like that and from the outside of the building you need to hold the roof and from the inside of the building you need to press those little flaps against that roof piece to get that properly adhered in place. And to complete this building, we need to adhere this roof here. And I'm sorry, I wasn't filming when I adhered that piece, but all you have to do is to grab this piece here, fold it in half, and the pointy side of this piece will go towards the roof. And then you have to adhere the sides on those little flaps that are on the walls of the building or the front wall of the building. So this is a very basic structure in the same way that I glue all these pieces together. You can start adding and adding different pieces to this project. I'm going to keep it simple. And now I'm going to show you the magic. So how you can transform these blank pieces of paper into walls and roof and decorative elements for your building. So the first thing we are going to do is to trim all the flaps. We don't need flaps here, we just need the panels because we are going to adhere these panels over that foundation that we just made. So I'm trimming those flaps here and I'm going to do the same with all the pieces. And because I added side units to this building, I need to trim a panel of the building like so. You will understand that a lot better when I'm putting this together and you will understand that when you are making your building so these are the panels that I'm going to use to decorate this building it's just like super simple and for that realistic look we are going to be using these mini embossing folders that will emboss that texture on the paper 
So I'm loving this one here. I think it was sold out because it's so gorgeous. One fun thing is that when I bought it, I thought that this was big, but actually it's tiny. And I was like, where is my embossing folder? But you don't need a big embossing folder. This is just perfect for the size of these buildings because they are small. So look at this. You can just emboss the whole piece by just placing it there. Run this through the die cutting machine and you will be done. It's just very, very clever. So to emboss the paper, you can use just a metal chin. And you see that I just placed the embossing folder directly on the die cut platform. There are no cutting plates or anything else there. And when I saw this, okay, I say, this is nice, but this could be better. So then I just place the embossing folder again on the platform. I use the metal chin and I graph this A4 sheet of cardstock. This is 240 grams cardstock. I fold it in half, place it there, and I run this to the machine. So that provides more pressure and the embossed image is going to look a lot more three-dimensional. So that's super cute. I'm going to do exactly the same with all the pieces. And for now, I'm going to use the same embossing folder. Okay, the step three after die cutting and embossing is to add color. And to do that, I'm going to use Distress Inks. I like to use Distress Inks because they are blendable, they react with water creating beautiful textures, and they also give a realistic look and feel to the projects that I really love. I'm going to apply a little bit of yellow, green, and brown ink colors over these panels, and I'm going to leave white areas. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, I'm just going to add a little bit of color here and there. going to spray this with a little bit of water to activate the ink and I'm going to allow this to dry. Then I'm going to bring a very important box that I have here because my supplies comes in this box from Simon Says Stamp. And then I'm going to place all these pieces there and I'm going to spray them using a grey oxide ink. Again, I'm not covering the whole pieces with this ink. And once I apply the ink, I also spray water to activate the ink and I allow this to dry. Next, we are going to use the very important black suit ink. I use this ink for everything, it's a mousse half. And to apply it, I'm going to use a flat bristles brush, like this one here. This is going to allow me to add the ink only on the raised areas of the embossed image, creating that realistic look and feel. That is what I'm looking for here. Just trying to get those stones to show up. And I'm applying the ink from the edges of this piece towards the center and I'm being very light-handed. You don't need to apply any pressure. The brush will do the work I have the brush listed in the video description as well. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with all these pieces. There is no mystery. As you see there, this is easy peasy. And if at any stage you want to add more contrast, you can apply walnut stain ink here and there, and especially in the corners or the edges of these panels. And once this is done, all we have to do is to adhere these pieces on the foundation and you might notice that when you emboss the paper you might lose the scoring lines and it's going to be a little bit challenging to score or fold the paper over those areas so use a ruler to help yourself to score that straight and to get that right okay the next thing i'm going to do is to remove any piece that i don't need from these panels and I'm going to add acetate behind those little windows. And I'm using double-sided tape and also liquid glue to adhere the acetate. Now I'm going to play some music and I'm going to show you the process of gluing these pieces in place.
it that I use this Nouveau Sparkle Spray to add a sparkle to the roof tiles and also on those areas where the paper has a gap or an indentation or underneath the roof so that you won't see the white cardstock underneath. You will see like a kind of rusty finish in that area. You will have a hot mess on your table for sure, but this sparkle spray will add the most gorgeous finish to your building. It's amazing when you mix it with Distress Oxide sprays because you can see that oxidized ink behind it and it's just beautiful and you can see that in the pictures of this building. All those little details are the things that makes the difference and it's super easy to do. And now all you have to do is to add those roof tiles to your building. You can slide some of them behind the little roof in the front of the building. And you can also adhere some of them just like I'm doing there, trimming any excess of paper and using every single piece so that you don't waste anything. Okay, the only advice I have to adhere the roof tiles in place is to start adding them from the bottom to the top of the roof so that they will overlap nicely. And then to cover those white row edges, you can use the same sparkle spray or you can also use black ink. Now I'm also going to add roof tiles to the front roof and I'm going to show you how I did that. So I first put together five of these tiles so I adhere them just one after the other one just like that and then I die cut this piece here that is identical to that roof piece there to use as a template so let me show you here I fold this in half this is the half of that roof piece there and I'm going to place it like so over this die cut and I'm going to trim this like so that will give me the perfect angle for the roof, if you see there. And then I'm going to use this template again to cut this piece like so. Please pay attention, I'm not doing this straight cut right next to the template. I'm leaving a little bit of allowance to be able to cover completely this piece on the building. So I'm just adding glue here, also glue at the back of this piece to firmly attach this to the building. And then I'm going to do exactly the same for the other side of this piece here. I decided to add another chimney as well. So this is the piece to do that. I'm going to fold over the scoring lines in that piece and I'm going to add a little bit of glue in the last flap so that I can adhere this together. This is so small that it's a little bit tricky to handle, but you will get there. Just keep holding the piece in place. Use a pin or something to help you to get things aligned. And that's it. This piece has two smaller flaps at the bottom that you can fold towards the inside to adhere this to your building. And you can also fold them towards the outside if you want to adhere that in that way on the building. And to complete that chimney, I'm going to use a little piece of paper and I'm going to wrap this around this pen like so, just to give it that rounded shape. And then I'm going to add to the top of that piece three pieces of paper, just like that. And next, I'm going to use a bone folder to break the fibers of the paper and I'm going to glue the edges like so. 
those little pieces of paper we added at the top of that piece will create a little edge at the top of the chimney that looks really nice. There is a little die that will create that piece for the chimney. That is the one I'm adding there. And when using Morning Fog Nubo Sparkle Spray over these pieces, you will notice that it looks different on white than on black. So depending on the cast-off colors you use and the mediums, you will achieve different cool effects for your building. And another thing I wanted to let you know here is that it's ideal to add the chimney before adding the roof tiles, but if you want to do that after, you can also do that. And now I'm going to add some of the paint I have in my hand over this piece here, just to give you another idea on how to use different pieces created by the dyes on your projects. So I'm just adding inks over this piece as I did for the other walls. And I'm also trying to reveal that embossed pattern using a flat brush and black ink. Once this is done, I could adhere this over the building, but I decided to do it right. So I'm going to trim all the flaps of this piece. I die cut another one that I'm going to use as a base or underneath the decorative piece. And I'm going to glue this like so. And once this is in place, I just glue the decorative piece over. And then I decided to trim the doors of this piece here and that's my building. So I was planning also how to display this and I found this candle holder. So I was just eyeballing and cutting different pieces to create a base to sit the building over, just like that. I also die cut that piece with a circle die to be able to insert a tea light underneath, just like that, so you can see there. And well, there are so many things that you can do with this, but I think that they have so much work and so many details that they deserve a stand. So I'm going to show you an idea to create your own stands using candle holders. You can get this in a wide variety of shapes. And by the moment I could manage to finish this video, I made another house. I'm going to show you that at the end of the video using another candle holder, completely different. And that's more ideas for you, so that's good. So the basis for your building needs to have the shape of the candle holder you choose or the stand. This candle holder has a circular shape. I need to create this in a semi-circular shape. My English is not that great to explain this kind of thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to help myself and I'm going to place the, the gray board inside the holder. This is going to hold the pieces in place while I'm gluing them just like that. So you have to find a way to make the things easier for you. So I'm going to allow this to dry here for a while. And when this is semi-dry, I'm also going to reinforce the corners of that piece by using pieces of cardstock. I just grab a piece of cardstock, cut it in half for a nice finishing or more neat work, but you can just fold it in half. And I'm going to adhere it on those corners there. I'm going to trim any excess of cardstock that I can also glue inside this to reinforce a lot more the piece. And because I'm super annoying, I'm also going to add cardstock over the top foldings or the other side of the piece. And then I trim any excess of cardstock. Then I'm going to use this piece as a template to cut a black piece of cardstock that I'm going to emboss and I'm going to use as a decorative piece to cover this up. And from there, I'm going to use different elements to decorate this project.
Okay, I know that was a lot of info for two minutes, but I just wanted to show you quickly what I did. I was adding colors with different distress inks, and I also added a lot of sparkle using a Nuvo sparkle spray. I know that Tim Holtz has sparkle sprays. I need to buy some of them. I don't have them, and depending on how the light hit this, this looks amazing. It's just very beautiful. So I'm using there that light to show you how these shine. And this is my normal lighting here. And this is how this project looks when it's complete. I added a sentiment and you can see all the finishing touches. Also, this tea light is added at the bottom. So you can just turn it on and off. And you can also remove the whole piece from the base. And if I turn off the lights, you can see the tea light just lighting up from the inside of the building and that looks super cute and well this is just an idea to get crafty with these die sets and all the supplies i use are listed in the video description and also in my blog i'm going to be adding those links in the video description as well if you like brighter compositions i also made this little cottage here this one includes different decorative elements different roof tiles an extra window in the second floor, also one single chimney in different embossed patterns on the walls, also a little bench in the back that you can see just there, and fences. All those little elements were DIY. I used little wooden sticks and I just glued them together to give shape to different elements to decorate this house. And I also added hanging die cut golden stars. This can be removed from the holder, but it's very tight in there it's not as easy to remove and i did it that way to be able to turn on and turn off or change the tea light if i need to and that's all for today this is a very long video because i spent hours and hours playing with these die sets and adding things here and there to these projects i hope you like them don't forget to subscribe to my channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration thank you very much for watching and happy crafting bye